Hey everybody, welcome. This episode, I wanted to continue our discussion of algorithm classification, big O notation, time complexity, whatever the heck you wanna call it. We already talked about constant time and linear time in the previous episode, so you might wanna check that out if you want the foundation of algorithms and how to think about them. Now that we got that foundation under our belt, I wanted to talk about some variations. So first, I wanted to go through an example of searching an array. And we talked about this with linear time, but now we're gonna switch something up. What we're gonna do is we're gonna create a really long array here. I mean, it's not that long, it's only gonna be like 16 elements probably. So one, two, three, four, five. And I'm just gonna fill this with data. All right, so now let's think worst case scenario, you have to find the number three here. Well, an algorithm is going to go through every single element, checking to see if it's three. Nope, 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 nope. And it's gonna to get to that final spot here and finally find the value three. So this is said to be a linear algorithm because worst case scenario, it takes the entire list length. So if N or the size is 16, it basically takes 16 operations which an operation in this case would be checking to see if the value is whatever value we're looking for. So if we're searching for three, it's gonna check for three, nope, three, nope. Keep going 16 times. This is not what we wanted to talk about in this video. This is what we talked about in the previous video, but now let's switch it up. Let's say instead of having this array here, we have a sorted array. So I'm gonna redraw this array. Now I'm probably gonna screw this up, but I'm trying my best to get this sorted in the right order. Now instead of three, we're going to search for 100. I mean, three would still work, but 100 is going to show my example a little bit better here. So for this, instead of starting at the left, and just going through, we're actually going to start at the middle. So we're pretty much going to split the data in half, the left side being the tiny numbers and the right side being the, the larger numbers. And this is known as a binary search algorithm. So the binary search algorithm, instead of starting at the beginning, it's actually going to start at the middle. So if there's 16 elements, we're going to start in the middle at element eight. Element eight is gonna have index seven. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're gonna split it right here. Take a look at this number and we're gonna do a comparison. If it's less than the search, the number we're searching for, we know it's not this half, which we can tell since 30 is less than 100, it's not gonna be in any of these numbers since it's sorted. And you can see how powerful this is. It requires a sorted array, but the benefit is that with just one operation, one check and comparison there, we can eliminate half of the data. And this is where the log n time comes in. So when you see log two of n, it's doing something like this, where each operation cuts the number of elements we have to work with in half. So now we just repeat that process again. So we split this in half right here and we look at 70. Is 70 less than 100? Yes, it is. So we got rid of another half of data. Now we look at this half here, split it in the middle. Is 92 too low? Yes, it is. So we eliminate that half. Now we got 93 and 100, we split it. Is 93 too low? Yes, it is. So we eliminate it and we are left with the final check, which is the correct one. So if you count this, one operation, two operation, three operation, for operation. So with a n of 16, we only had to do four operations, which this matches perfectly with a logarithm of log two of 16. This equals four. And this might be embarrassing, but I always have to remind myself how logarithms work. We're basically saying two to the x is equal to 16 and that number right there is going to be four in this case. So 
That's where this number comes from. So that is an example of a logarithmic algorithm complexity where the amount of data we have to work with cuts in half every single operation. Very nice, very fast. This is faster than linear time. Charting it out, if this was linear time, you know, logarithmic time is gonna be like something like that. <laughs> I don't know exactly, but basically a lot closer to constant time. And anytime we can get to closer to constant time, that is great. Now the downside here is if you have an array and you need to search it and you want to use the binary search algorithm, you're going to have to sort it first. So you need a way to see if it's worth the cost to sort it. And the answer is if you're going to be searching it tons and tons of times, then it's probably best just to sort it. If you're only going to search it one time, it's probably best not to sort it because sorting it also takes time and we're gonna get into some of the sorting algorithms later. In fact, we're gonna get into one right now, probably one of the worst sorting algorithms in terms of complexity because it's actually going to be n squared, which is gonna look like this. So let's talk about a sorting algorithm that is n squared. All right, so you have an array and this is just the number 0 through 9. So at the end, we should have 0, 1, 2, all the way up to 9. But right now, they are out of order. And the algorithm we're going to use is basically going to look at each element and figure out where it should go using the left side of the array as like the final product. Of course, you could just create another array. I'm not going to draw it out, but you could just drag one element at a time, <laughs> iterating through to check which one is, is the next. So that's another way you could structure this, but we're gonna go with just using one array. This is known as an in-place algorithm. In other words, it doesn't require any additional structure outside of the original input. So we're going to arrange the original input in a different way without creating another array. So the way this works is you just take this first element and you just keep it there and say, yo, this, this one is done. It's, we're basically going one element at a time, so the first element, it's just a thing that you just do. <laughs> the next, now you have to worry about two elements, seven and nine. So if seven is less than nine, you're going to put it before nine. So it's gonna look like this. This is gonna be a disaster because I have to redraw it every time. So seven, nine. Then you do it again with the five. So again, this is going, you're going to check to see if it's less than nine check to see if it's less than seven, and it is. So we're going to put it before seven. So now we got five, seven, nine. Please pardon the handwriting. We're gonna get into explaining the algorithm complexity part in a moment, but let's just go through this process. Same thing's gonna happen with three. It's gonna check nine, seven, five. None of those are less than three, so it's going to put it at the beginning one more time. Same thing will happen with the one, so we'll just do both those together. So it'll be one, three, five, seven, nine. So you're probably noticing a trend here. For every single element, we go and check each element. Obviously not every single element because we're not checking the ones over here on the right, but as this grows, we have to check another element. So another way you can think about it is for every element, we have to check each element. This looks a lot like a nested loop. So imagine this being a for loop with a for loop on the inside. For every single element in this outer array, check to see if all the elements to the left are greater than or less than that element. So you can notice there is a loop for every single iteration of another loop. And this is a nasty problem because we're basically squaring n. So imagine if we had a very, very, very large list and then for one element, you have to check to see where it's positioned for every single of the million elements. That's going to take a ton amount of time. And then you got to do that for every single element. So it's really bad. Now, this one is a little bit different because it's going to check the nine. It's still less than that, but it's going to check the seven. Realize seven is too small. So it's just going to move itself before the nine. Four is going to check each one. Realize it belongs here. Two is going to put itself right here. Six is going to check, put itself right here. 
<laughs> where Ray's is looking like a giant mess right now. But last one, zero, it's going to check each one of these. Realize it's the smallest number and it's gonna push everything over. All right, so this something like that. But basically, we're not getting into the details of how to implement this algorithm. Maybe we'll do that later. The point here is that we have a, a complexity problem where for every element, we have to iterate through the elements. You saw that very clearly on that last one where zero was over here on the right and it had to check every single element to realize it was the smallest element. Seems like a waste of processing and it is. Not a problem when we're just dealing with 10 elements here. However, if we're dealing with 10 million, it's gonna be gross. So I'm gonna go wash my hands and we're gonna move on to the next video. But this is an example of a squared algorithm where the actual number of processing steps is n squared. So if the input is 10, you can think of it as 100. It's not going to be exactly 100, obviously, because it doesn't iterate through the entire array every single time, but it is in the n squared classification. So hopefully that makes good sense